everyone, thank you so much for joining me in this video. Welcome back, and if you are new here, welcome. My name is Quinn, and thank you so much for clicking on this video. So today, I'm actually going to be trying a cottage pie recipe from Darren McGrady, who actually happened to be a former royal cook. And this recipe is also allegedly uh, Prince William and Prince Harry's favorite recipe or favorite meal growing up. So I figured if this recipe was good enough for the British royal family, I would give it a try myself. So I got this recipe on Oprah.com. Uh, it's a recipe, as I mentioned, created by Darren McGrady, uh, the former cook for the royal family. All right, so to make this recipe, you wanna start with the beef base. So in a large saucepan over high flame, heat the oil and add the finely chopped onions. Saute until the onion becomes soft and translucent. Add the ground beef and break it up using a wooden spoon. Saute until the beef has lost all of its pink color. Gradually stir in the flour, thyme, two cups of water, kitchen bouquet seasoning, beef bouillon cubes, and Worcestershire sauce. All right, so I wanna stop it right there because when I follow this recipe, I noticed that the beef was very, very oily and the recipe didn't call to drain the oil. I didn't know if the oil was needed to kind of create a roux with the flour, so I kept it in there. But I did notice making this that it was very, very oily and I ended up having to blot out the oil afterwards. So if I were to do this again, I would drain the oil even though it doesn't say so in the recipe. I just wanted to kind of mention that with you guys if you do decide to try this. So continuing on, reduce the heat to low and simmer the meat so that it's just bubbling for about 30 to 45 minutes until the sauce has thickened and the meat is fork tender. Remove the pan from the stove and use a slotted spoon to transfer the beef to the earthenware dish. I just use a baking dish for this. The slotted spoon will lift just the beef so that it will not be too wet to hold the potatoes. And the recipe also wants you to cool both the meat and the liquid. I didn't have any extra liquid when I made this, so I just let the beef cool on the stove. All right, so to make the potato topping, place the potatoes in a large pot and add cold water to about one inch above the potatoes. Cover the pot and bring to a boil over high heat. Lower the heat to a simmer and cook until the potatoes are tender when pricked with a fork, about 20 minutes. Drain off the water and replace the drained potatoes in the pan over a low heat for one to two minutes to dry them thoroughly. Mash the potatoes with a potato masher or pass through a ricer. So I actually got a potato ricer to make this recipe and uh, it was a lot harder than I thought or maybe I just didn't get the right potato ricer but it was, it was messy for me. All right, and then stir in the nutmeg, cream, and egg yolk with the butter, salt, and pepper into the mashed potatoes. Then use the mashed potatoes to cover the top of the dish. Either pipe them using a wide star tube or spoon them on top, and then fluff up using a fork. So for this part, um, I noticed that it was very, very dry. Um, I did forget the egg yolk, which I know accounted for a little bit of the moisture, but the recipe really only called for one fourth of a cup of cream, and that was definitely not enough. I ended up adding uh, an extra cup of cream to my potatoes to get it to the consistency that I had it. Um, I think with the egg yolk, it'll be a little bit creamier, so I would still probably stick with the one cup extra or maybe three fourths of a cup extra of cream, but I definitely needed a lot more cream to make the potatoes the consistency that he had in his video. All right, and then sprinkle the top of the potatoes with the grated cheddar. It can be kept for 24 hours at this stage if covered with plastic wrap. Then bake in a preheated oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 to 30 minutes until the potatoes are golden brown and the pie has heated through. And that is pretty much the recipe. Uh, I'm going to be right back with the actual food. <laughs> All right, I have the cottage pie in front of me right now, and I'm not gonna lie, I was very hesitant, or I am very hesitant just looking at it because I am used to a shepherd's pie, which I just found out when making this recipe that shepherd's pie is made from lamb and cottage pie is made from beef. I had no idea. I thought shepherd's pie was like this, um, but with more veggies and stuff in it, this whole time, but I've made shepherd's pie in the past with beef um, and I've used a lot more vegetables. So that was one thing that kind of threw me off with this recipe. Um, there wasn't a lot of vegetables in it, but I can see why this was popular amongst Prince 
William and Prince Harry as they were kids because there aren't a lot of vegetables. So I did pair this with some green beans because I needed a little bit of veggies or a little bit of greens to go with this dish. But I will say just looking at it, because my meat was really greasy, um, it kind of didn't look that great. Now that could have just been because of the meat that I use, you know? Like if you were using like lean ground beef, you might not have an issue, but I did um, just with the beef I got from my grocery store. And then I quickly want to go over some of the changes I made with this recipe before I try it. So with the potatoes, it called for two teaspoons of salt. I found that that was just a lot of salt for um, the little bit of mashed potatoes that we had. So I ended up adding one and a half teaspoons of salt and that was like the perfect amount for us. I'm really glad I did uh, lower the sodium in that. Um, and then on the other hand, the meat didn't have any salt added to it whatsoever, just the seasoning um, and the Worcestershire sauce. And when I tried it after it was done, I noticed that it was like pretty bland. So I did add about three fourths of a teaspoon of salt to the ground beef mixture and that was what tasted good to me. So I highly recommend if you do try this to taste the beef and taste the potatoes before you assemble everything because I did think that it needed a little bit of adjusting. But that was pretty much the adjustments I made. Again, in the future, I would drain the fat from the beef uh, before going forward with it. I would rather drain the fat from the beef and then add in a little bit of oil to mix with the flour if needed, but I just find that this is like very, very greasy. But who knows, maybe it will all come together with the taste test. So. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a try. It does look very um, comforting, very like filling and hearty. And let's give that a try. Mmm. Okay. That is actually really good. Um, like I said, I'm used to seeing a little bit more vegetables in like a shepherd's pie. So this to me was to kind of just plain looking, very boring looking. The meat is like very flavorful. Um, it's pretty rich for the meat and it's like very like creamy. And I think that's just because it was stewing for so long. And then the potatoes are so, so amazing. I love the consistency of it. It's so creamy and velvety. This is the first time I've made mashed potatoes using a ricer. Although the ricer that I got gave me a little bit of issues, um, it ended up giving me a really good finished product and it's so, so creamy, um, so much creamier than a masher that I've used in the past. And I also really like the cheddar cheese on it. I like a little that it has a little bit of crispiness on the potatoes. But yeah, like really, really impressed with just how flavorful and how like amazing this meal is. I can totally see why this was a hit for the young princess. And also in England where it's like, you know, rainy and like cold a lot of the year, like this would just really hit the spot. You can also add veggies. I think carrots would be really good in this. I think um, even maybe some green peas would be really good in this, but you have the option to add it. But I am very impressed that even without any vegetables or anything, it's just very, very flavorful. It almost has like um like a gravy consistency to it. So it goes with the potatoes so so well. Normally when I make shepherd's pie, it's not this creamy, it's not this like thick. Um, so I actually really like this and like how it came together. But anyway guys, that is pretty much it for this video. I am actually really excited that I tried this. I learned a lot from it. Um, I think I will be tweaking it in the future when I do make it again, but I definitely will be making it again because it is so, so yummy and so, so comforting. But yeah, I mean, that is pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know if you end up giving this recipe a try. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed it. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to click on that subscribe button right there and hit that bell notification so you can see more videos like this. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.